Vatican correspondent Colm Flynn sat down with the Cardinal just days before his death. Colm joins me now live. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. How was the Cardinal when you spoke to him only a few days ago? Danica, it's good to speak to you, and it was incredible. I'm actually in Miami, Florida at the moment, but normally based in Rome, and the day before I flew to the United States, the last person that I met and interviewed was Cardinal George Pell. I went to his papal apartment, which is just right next door to St. Peter's Square at the Vatican in Rome, to get his reaction to the passing of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. And, of course, during the interview, he was uh, remarking about how sad he was at the passing of the previous pope. He remembered his uh, visit to World Youth Day in Australia in 2008. But the Cardinal himself, Cardinal Pell, was in very good form. In fact, I've interviewed him probably four or five times over the years in Rome. And I mentioned it to the TV crew as we left his apartment. I said, didn't you think that uh, Cardinal Pell was uh, vibrant? He was uh, in great humor. He was talking to us about his Christmas break. He was looking forward to plans for the year ahead. And uh, just to reiterate what I just said, he was in very good form just a few days ago. And how have members of the Catholic Church reacted to his sudden passing? You have a checkered and mixed response, of course. You have those who see uh, him as someone who never faced justice here on this earth. And then you have others who believe that uh, he was the victim of a great injustice with what he went through. But I think it's fair to say, you know, leaving Australia to the side for a moment, you know, my expertise is the Vatican in Rome. And I have to say that for the past number of years, after he returned to the Vatican following the acquittal from the Australian High Court, he was very much very much liked in the Vatican by people who worked in the different dicasteries. They're the ministries of the Vatican, by the other cardinals as well, by the media, by the ambassadors from various countries. And even though he was 81 years of age, he still influenced um, hugely different parts of the Catholic Church. He still wielded great power within the Catholic Church. People would come to his papal apartment for advice. I know when I would go to the apartment, uh, whether it was in a professional capacity to do an interview for TV or radio, or in a personal capacity, he invited me a number of times for lunch and for dinner. And there was always people leaving and people coming in after me, maybe from the Vatican Bank, from different parts of uh, the Holy See. So he still was a towering figure. It's hard kind of to, to, to underestimate, not underestimate that, how much of a towering figure he was, even right up until his death. It's an interesting point you raise because there's no doubt here in Australia in particular there's been mixed reaction to his death and the controversial life that he led. Are people overseas as divided as well, do you think, or not so much? They are divided and because I'm just seeing some of the messages that I'm getting on uh, Twitter from doing TV and radio interviews. But the thing about it is, I think, you know, the case, such a high profile case in Australia, not as high profile in other parts of the world. But you, you know what it's uh, like in this kind of Twitter sphere that we live in now. Uh, unfortunately, the reality is that many people read a tweet, they read a short headline about a person or a case, and they make up their mind according to that. So I do think a lot of the uh, the sentiments in Australia, uh, the strong anti pell sentiments, are echoing throughout the Catholic world. And in reality, I feel from some of the people I've been interacting with, they probably don't know too much about the case, the evidence, and um, even the acquittal. You know, many people know about his conviction. And then when you mention to them, well, you know, he was acquitted by Australia's High Court, seven judges to none, um, they're kind of lost on that. But even giving the uh, case aside, the very famous case in 2018, uh, even when you look at the his theology, his preaching on church teachings, that alone divided people. You know, he was a staunch defender of Catholic values, and uh, this wasn't anything new for Cardinal George Pell. This is something that has been taught by the Catholic Church for hundreds, for thousands of years. But it is true that he uh, he set a very different type of tone. For example, in the report you just played, the reporter mentioned kind of his stance on abortion, saying it was this great evil, to paraphrase. For example, Pope Francis himself has said that abortion is murder. But there's a different tone that Pope Francis has set, which kind of um, it transmits a different way in the media. And I think Cardinal George Pell, in an interview once with the BBC that I did with him, he did say that he felt he did himself no favours in life 
because he was always seen as on the defense and taking a, a very hard line on church teachings uh, in Australia when he was there as a bishop. Colm Flynn, very interesting to speak with you. Thank you very much for taking the time. We appreciate it.